Jesus Christ is lifted high. To be my Lord and Savior. Take my life. Thank you, Jesus. Join us today in worshiping Jesus Christ. situation after 38 years that could make a man well and that's Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When God came into my life, He became my Father. For better or for worse. Calgary, Canada, a city that we pray will be a light unto the nations. On this day, Street Church presented the King's Banquet for the Forgotten People on the Streets. This wasn't only a day to feed the homeless a feast of AAA Alberta steaks, but it was also a day that we invited city officials to come down to interact with them. We saw repentant hearts, baptisms, worship, and a true festive spirit. We praise God for all His work in Calgary and encourage you to step out in a similar way wherever you live. Welcome to Street Church. We hope you'll be blessed. Jesus still changes lives. He's minded to save. He's minded to save you today. Right now, I just want to take a few moments to make it personal. For everyone in this park, the invitation is extended to you. It was extended to me, and eight years ago, Jesus changed my life. He gave me a new nature, and He can give you a new nature. You see, I was on a road on the fence, I want a little bit of God and I want a, a little bit of the world. I was on the fence and that fence was Satan's fence. And, and you see what happened was, is one morning I got up, after drinking so much, I had a seizure. I had an epileptic seizure and that morning God showed me that I was not in control of my life. That my life was like this. And he showed me eternity. That everyone in this park will die. Everyone in this park will either go to one of two destinations, heaven or hell. Jesus says it this way, there's a wide road, and many take it, and it's the easy road, and its end leads to destruction, or hell, it's a second death. And then there's a narrow road, that's the hard road, and Jesus is the door, and that road ends to eternal life. Which road are you on this afternoon? Everyone in this park is on one of those two roads. Everyone in this park is either lost or saved. There's only two types of people. Which one are you this afternoon? I want you and give, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to Jesus Christ this afternoon. I want to give you an opportunity to be saved. And you might be saying, saved from what? I mean, I'm a good person. Well, the parable that Susan read, she said, the servant went out and invited many people to the banquet. But many, with one accord, made excuses. What excuse are you making in your heart right now that you're justifying saying no to Jesus Christ? 
What excuse is it? Is it drugs, alcohol, relationship? For me, it was pride. For me, I didn't want to give up control of my life. Which is it for you? What excuse are you making? It says this king actually got angry with the people that said no. And this king is just not like a mayor of the village or of, of the city of Calgary. He's not like the president. This is Jesus Christ. This is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Where every knee will bow and every tongue confess that He is Lord. This is Jesus. Which is the only name that's been given under heaven by which men can be saved. Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power to save. There's power to heal. There's power to restore. Have you come to Jesus? That's what this whole banquet's all about. This isn't about food. It's about your soul. Are you saved? If you were to die tonight, heaven or hell, which is it for you? God loves you. The Bible says that He's being patient with all of us. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance. That's in 2 Peter 3, 9. He also says in Ezekiel 18, don't die, that God takes no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. He wants you to be saved. The Bible says it's not that we love God, but that He loved us and gave His only Son as a sacrifice for our sins. God loves you, but He's holy. And I, I'm going to read a passage of Scripture, and I want to give you a simple gospel message, because there's power in the gospel to save. The Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. You see, God can touch you this afternoon supernaturally, and He can change your life. He can change you. But before we read this passage, I just want to ask you a couple questions. What are you giving in exchange for your soul? Jesus says this in Mark chapter 8. He says, what good is it if a man gains the whole world but loses his soul? What good is it if a man gains the whole world? Jesus is saying that you could own the whole world, all the gold, all the real estate. You could have whatever relationship you wanted, but if your soul is going to hell, you've missed it. What price would you put on your soul? A thousand dollars? A million? You know, the sad truth is, is like I went for so many years, the price of my soul, I, I was living for garbage. I was placing the price on my soul, which is eternal, as garbage. But Jesus said there's nothing as valuable as your soul. How is your soul today? How many of you have lost it? How many of you died tonight and you stepped into eternity? And you stepped into an eternity of condemnation and suffering in a place called hell, the lake of fire. You see, the worst thing about eternity, if you're not saved, is that it's forever and ever and ever. You see, everyone in this park has hope. Everyone in this park has hope to respond to Jesus Christ. But once you die, there's no more hope if you're outside of Christ. So let's pray, and, and I'm going to read a passage from the Bible. And I pray that God opens our hearts and minds to His Word. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank You that You sent Your Son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for our sins. That He paid it all. And Lord, that all we have to do is receive this free gift of salvation. God, I pray for Your Spirit to come and open hearts, open eyes that they can see, and open ears that they can hear. God, I pray that many would come to Jesus, not a religion, because religion binds, to come to the person of Jesus Christ. He's here right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. So Isaiah 64, 5 and 6 says this, You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you in your ways. You are indeed angry, for we have sinned. In these ways we continue, and we need to be saved. But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade like a leaf. You see, the first thing that passage says is that we're unclean. We're unclean. We need to be clean. You see, the biggest problem is most people don't come to Jesus is we don't need our we don't know our need for Jesus Christ. We don't know the sinfulness in our own hearts, the sinful nature. This passage says. 
It's because we're unclean. That's why God is angry with us. Adam and Eve sinned and rebelled against God in the garden. And when they sinned and rebelled, there was a separation between men and God. This sinful nature separates us from God because God is holy and righteous. And all of us are sinners. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Who's a sinner here? Raise your hand. Amen. Well, we have a few honest people, but the Bible says all of us are. All of us are sinners. We've all rebelled against a holy God. And that's what separates us from God. But the truth is, is most of us don't realize how depraved our nature is, how evil we are before a holy God. You know, it's like this. It's like if you're a patient and you have symptoms of cancer and you go to a doctor and this doctor runs all the tests. He does the MRI, the CAT scan, the blood tests and he finds out you have cancer, a serious deadly cancer and you only have a few months to live and he has a cure for you. And you go up to this doctor and this doctor tells you, well, you know, you can take the cure, you can leave the cure. You know, it's no big deal. But I recommend you taking some chemotherapy, some radiation, there's gonna be some pain and suffering. You know, most of us would say, no way, because the doctor never gave us the true diagnosis of the problem. Now how about if we went to a doctor who had the same results but told the truth, who said, son, you have severe cancer, you're 30 years old, you're gonna die in the next few months, but I have a treatment here that will cure you that treatment is chemotherapy, radiation, you'll go through some pain and suffering, but if you take this cure, you'll be healed, and you'll probably have 40 years to live. Who wouldn't sign up for that one? But how much worse is it for us to have leprosy and cancer of the soul, to be separated from God, and God providing the way of salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. He, he sent His Son to die on the cross, the Bible says He became sin for us. He gave us a way to be saved. He gave us a way to be made right with Him. And then we say, no God, I think I'll do it my own way. You know what that must do to the heart of God? You know, many people say, how could God throw anyone into hell? The bigger question is, is how could He let anyone into heaven? How could He let anyone into heaven since heaven's a perfect place made for perfect people? It's a holy place. And if you and I go there in our sins, I mean, I don't want a pedophile, child molester, I don't want a sinner beside me in heaven. Because heaven's a glorious place. It's a perfect place. And you and I are perfect, so what are we going to do? All the religion in the world, if you've been baptized, if you're a member of a church, that's not good enough to get you into heaven. If you're a good person here in this park this afternoon, that's not good enough to get you into heaven. Actually, being a good person will a lot of times send you straight to hell. You know why? Because we rely on our own self-righteousness and we trample on the blood of Jesus. We don't think we need the blood because we're good people. I've been down here for five years and spoken to hundreds if not thousands of people. And when I ask them the question, if you were to die tonight and stand before a holy God, why would God let you into heaven? Almost every answer is, well, I'm a good person. I treat my neighbor right. And you see, the problem with that is human standards are so much lower than God's. See, we compare ourselves to others. We can, you know, we compare ourselves to Hitler and Jack the Ripper and we're looking pretty good. But how about compare ourselves to Billy Graham or, Ther or Mother Teresa? We don't look so good. But you know, God compares us to the perfect one, Jesus Christ, the God-man. The one who was tempted in all things but never sinned. God compares us to Jesus Christ, the one who was born the Virgin Mary, who walked on water, who raised the dead, and who shed his blood and died for you and me so we can live. That's who God compares us to. We all fall short. And that's why we need a Savior, and Jesus is mighty to save. You know, this uh, the second passage says that all our righteous acts are like filthy rags in the eyes of God. What are you trusting in for your salvation? What are you putting your, what are you staking your life on? What are you staking your eternity on? Is it some religion? A bunch of rules? You know, the word religion means to bind. And we're not here to give you religion, we're here to give you a personal relationship with Jesus. Religion binds, are you relying on your parents being Christian? 
be raised in a Christian home, being baptized as an infant, you, you, you think that's going to save you? Or do you think uh, being a good person is going to save you? It's not. God says right here, even your righteous acts are as filthy rags in His sight. So what must we do to be saved? How can we be saved? The Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. See, once we put on perfection, God doesn't see us as sinners anymore. He sees us through the blood of Jesus, and Jesus washes every sin away we've ever committed. That's the good news today, that He can save you, and He can wash you and clean you, and He can give you a new nature. You know, trying to get to God without Jesus Christ is like trying to swim from California to Hawaii. You know, if I set up a contest and said, okay, guys, whoever swims from California to Hawaii, I will give you a million dollars. How many would sign up for that? Some people say they would, but it's not humanly possible to swim from California to Hawaii. And the truth is, friends, as many of us would start swimming, and I'm a brutal swimmer, my talent is a dog paddle, so I'd probably be one of the first ones to die. But you might be able to swim ten times as far as I do, but you die as well. You see, that's what it's like for us trying to work our way to heaven without Jesus. It doesn't matter how good we are. If, we, if we're 75%, 75% good, 25% bad, that still gives us an F. We still don't get into heaven. It's only through Jesus. It's through His blood. That's the only way God provided the way. It's through another's merit. It's through Jesus Christ's righteousness. See, Jesus is the only one that can change our nature. We are a wicked and deprived humanity. We've rebelled against God. We've sinned against God. You might say, well, I'm not that bad. I haven't murdered anyone. Maybe some here have. Jesus can forgive you. But you know... God says, he, even if you've broken one of his laws, you've broken them all. Have you ever told a lie? That makes you a liar. Have you ever stolen anything? That makes you a thief. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust in your heart? Jesus said, that's like committing adultery. Have you ever hated anyone? Jesus said, it's like committing murder in your heart. You see, we're all sinners, friends. And... I'm not hammering you guys to hammer you, but I want you to know the truth that we all have a sickness and a disease of the soul. It's like a leprosy and cancer, and it separates us from God, and actually the Bible says it makes us an enemy of God, and God's wrath is upon us. John 3.36 says, those who believe in the Son have life, but those who do not believe in the Son do not have life, and the wrath of God abides upon them. And I want to see you saved. I want to see you come to heaven. But before many of you will come to the cross and receive the free gift of God, you have to realize the state you're in. I was in that state eight years ago, rebelling against God, separated from God because of my sins. I needed a Savior. I needed a Deliverer. And Jesus Christ is that Savior. He can save you this afternoon. Will you repent and put your faith in Him this afternoon? Will you come to Jesus? Because He can save you. He loves you. But you must be willing to come to Him. And Him and Him alone. You see, when the Bible says believe, it's saying that you're trusting in Him and Him alone. You're not trusting in your good works. You're not trusting in anything else but what Jesus did for you on that cross. That he went to that cross like a lamb unto the slaughter. The Bible says he's a lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And, it was, and when he was hanging on that cross, the Bible says he became sin for us. Which means he took the wrath and judgment of God upon himself. He took your penalty and, and mine on himself. And then God raised him from the dead on the third day and Jesus is living today. He's in this park, his spirit is. But will you let him in? Will you let him into your life to be your Lord and your Savior? Jesus is mighty to save. Jesus tells us in Revelation 3.20, He says, you think you're rich, but you're poor, naked, and blind. 
He says, your garments are filthy. He says, come to me and, and buy from me gold refined in the fire. Come to me and put on pure garments. He says, I stand at the door of your life, of your heart and knock. Anyone that opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him. We open the door today. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. It says we all fade as a leaf. You see, right now, many of us think we're going to live for years to come. But the truth is, is we don't know if we have tomorrow. God says in his word that our life is like a vapor. Here for a little while and then gone. Our life is so short. Every heartbeat, every breath is a gift from God. And you don't know and I don't know if we have tomorrow. We don't know if we'll have another chance to get saved. Don't be like I was. I kept saying, well, once I go get done school, then I'll live for Jesus. Once I do this, then I'll live for Jesus. Once I get married, then I'll live for Jesus. Once I get off the crack, then I'll live for Jesus. Once I get off the alcohol, then I'll live for Jesus. It doesn't go that way. You come as you are, and He cleans you. He does a, super, a supernatural work in us and gives us a new nature. That's what being born again is. That's what being converted is. It's just not a sinner's prayer. It's not a formula. It's not a five-step or a 12-step. It's God coming into your life, and because you trusted in the Savior and Jesus, your sins are wiped away, so now His Holy Spirit can come in with power and reside in us, and now we become the temple of God. The Bible says those who believe and receive Him become children of God. What do you think it's like to be a child of the living God? It's awesome. Joy, love, peace, and it's available to everyone. The King's Banquet. But what excuse are you making? I'm pleading with you today to come to Jesus. He will receive you with open arms. He does not turn away anyone that comes with a heart of humility, that comes with a heart that's saying, Jesus, I'm tired of doing it my own way. I've been doing it my own way my whole life. I'm empty. I'm depressed. I've been messing things up. I need a change in my life. Jesus, come into my life and change me. Wash me of my sins. Make me a new creature. And write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's right, a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, For those in Christ are a new, cre a, a new creature, a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Who here would like the old to be gone? The past to be washed away. It can be through the blood of Jesus. I'm talking about reconciliation with God. I'm talking about redemption, which means Jesus comes to cut the chains of bondage. You're no longer a slave to your sin, to the alcohol, to Satan, to crack, to depression. You're no longer a slave because Jesus Christ, His Spirit, lives inside of you. You have a power greater than yourself. You know, we have all this stake here, and it's great stake, but you will not benefit from the stake unless you take it. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the Bible says this, We are saved by grace through faith, not of works. It's a gift from God so that no one can boast. My friends, it's a judgment day coming. Hebrews 9, 27 says, It's appointed unto man to die once, and then the judgment. All of us will stand before a holy God and give account of our life. But the problem is, friends, is none of us will be able to stand without Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only one, the only one that can save us. You see, when we stand before God and when we're in Christ, God sees His Son, Jesus, He sees perfection, and He says, well done, good and faithful servant. Come in. Do you have eternal life? Will you come to Jesus? The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Maybe you're running from God, and I plead with you today to run to Him. You're running from the only one that can save you. You're running from Jesus, and he's the only one that can save you. Some here blaspheme Jesus Christ with their mouth, but he's the only one that can save you. Jesus Christ is the only one that can save your soul. He, he can wash you. And it's not enough to listen, it's to receive. Receive him. Receive him as Lord. You know, there's many in this park that might have said the sinner's prayer. I mean, you've 
You've done it and tried it. I've heard that the people have tried religion. They've done that. I guarantee that if you've tried religion or you've tried the Christianity, that you were never a Christian to begin with. The moment you're born again, you never leave. The moment God gives you a new nature, you're a son of God, and no one can tear you out of the son's hands. You see, we need a new nature, and that's what God does for us through Jesus Christ. You have a new nature. You know, there's a story about a pig, and this pig, if I have a big dirt puddle here, this pig will go in the dirt, and it'll love it in the dirt. It'll swim around in the dirt, and it'll love it. And, and if I take that pig out and try to wash that pig out, that pig will go right back to the dirt because that's its nature. But if I take a sheep and the sheep falls in the dirt and I take the sheep out and wash it, the sheep won't go back. And that's the same for us human beings. Is we need a new nature. Our old nature rebels against God. Our old nature is wicked. We need God to come in and give us a new nature. We need God to supernaturally fill us with His Spirit. And that's what He'll do. God says in His Word that I'll take out your heart of stone and give you a new heart of flesh. And I'll pour my Spirit within you. How many here would like a new nature? Come to Jesus. Come now. Every second, seven people die. Heaven or hell? Do you love them enough to tell them about Jesus? He said, he said I am the way. I am the truth. You are the salt of the earth. All men will hate you because of me. I am the light. Go, 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 go proclaim the gospel. You are the light of the world. You will be persecuted. No one comes to the Father but by me. Therefore, we are not ashamed of the gospel. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. Please, tell them about Jesus. For more information, visit streetchurch.ca.